Hello there, I want to show you today a technique I've got for solving a problem that sometimes occurs when you're doing an undercoat. And the problem I'm talking about is when the water, that, the paint that you're mixing on your palette, when it gets too watery. Now this is a problem for the undercoat because really what you want with an undercoat is that you load your hake with it and you put it down and it goes down, not dry on the glass, but just wet enough for you to be able to blend it a little and get rid of those seams which are left by the hairs of your hake. If, on the other hand, it goes down too watery, then it will be uneven on the glass, which means that the gum arabic will be unevenly distributed, the paint will be unevenly distributed, and it will get altogether streaky, even when you blend it, because there's so much water on your glass that when you come to blend it, it flicks off and it's uncontrollable. So the point is that the undercoat, done right, almost sets where you put it. It is just wet enough for you to blend it a little. However, it is very easy then, when you're mixing the undercoat, to add too much water. So what do you then do about that? Let me first of all do the undercoat as it should be, once or twice. So here I've got my palette, drying out a little under the heat of the vast studio lights. So I'm going to resurrect it. <clears throat> Here's my reservoir of paint up the front. Here's my lump of paint with a lid on top of it to stop it from drying out. And now I'm dragging down a little bit of dark paint to the bottom half of my palette with my hake. And at the same time, I am loading my hake, loading at both sides and shaping the hake. There's a little hair that's gone on, so I'm just going to get rid of that. And now, what I'm seeing when I'm dragging my brush through this paint that I'm mixing up on my palette is that there's very little movement. So I can do a zigzag like this, and of course, there is some movement because there's water, and in particular, around the edge of the hairs, there's water that's pushed out, so there's movement there. But it doesn't run all over the place. So now, that is a good sign. I come and do my undercoat, and that gives me reason to believe that when I use my hake to put down this wash like that, the paint will pretty much stay where I put it, but it will just be wet enough for me to take my blender and make it smooth, and that's what I want. So this is handmade glass, and you may hear a slight rocking because the glass is thicker at one end than another. So I'm going to blend it. So it was just wet enough for me to blend, and that's gone down fine. So I push that away. I don't want to touch it with my finger, so I use the tip of my badger to do that. Clean up this mess here, and go for the next piece. Load my hake again. And there's just enough water on my palette for me to do another piece. That's the thing about undercoating. You may have 20 or 30 or five or six pieces of glass to undercoat, but generally speaking, you can only mix up enough undercoating paint for two or three pieces. So the problem is, what do you do when you've run out? Let's lay this down and blend, and then deal with that problem of making more undercoating paint. But the thing is, let's say I'm talking to you. I'm not thinking properly. I stupidly go and dip my hake into the water like that and then put that down. And in a moment, my, hake, my, my palette has been transformed into a deluge zine. It is a disaster. There is no way this is any good for undercoating. You see, if I come and do that, you, there are streaks in it. And no, if I blend that, it'll wash all over the place. So it's horrible for undercoating paint. So what can I do? One thing I really suggest you don't do, don't use paper towels. Because, thank you, Kathy Jordan, paper lint always gets off. It gets into there, it get, then it gets into your reservoir, it gets into your lump, and then it gets into your hake, it gets into your badger, it gets onto your knife, it go, climbs up your tracing brushes, and you will find that weeks later there are still little dots that are coming out. So don't use paper. I'm going to put that away. <coughs> can use a cloth. Of course, a cloth is fine. You can just lift off excess water like that. The problem is 
that there may be, you know, I've been using this to clean my light box and things like that. So there may be dark paint that is also being put down. And also it leaves this sort of speckled, nasty, dry area on the palette. So one thing you can do, first of all, let's get, remember this, get the excess moisture off the hake. So we squeeze it off like that, very carefully running it against the side. Really important movement, those of you who are new to using hake. Just rub it off like that. And now what we can do is we can use the hake as a mop. This is part one of the technique. And of course, we could then get that off like that. Or indeed, instead of putting it back in there, it is fine, carefully, to push down the head of the hake like this. Now, I am telling you this. Some of you may know it already, that's fine. But many of you will think that there are certain things, quite rightly, there are always certain things that you must not do with brushes. For instance, with a tracing brush, you must not leave it face down in water like that because that counts as cruelty, that counts as abuse, it's terrible. And similarly with a badger, you, you, you know, when, when you finish with it at the end of the day, you leave it like that, you leave it resting on something. You don't leave it so that its head, for instance, its hairs are all caught underneath itself. That would count as cruelty, it's not right. Now similarly, therefore, some of you may think, I'm just gonna add a bit more water to create mayhem and madness on my palate again. Some of you may think, oh my gosh, I cannot possibly squeeze down like that with my hake. But in fact, it is fine. This hake of mine, it's 15 years old, and I've been doing that. And I know I might sound like one of those aged Victorian parents who says to a child, I always had a cold bath. I always had porridge made with water and salt and it never did me any harm. But I can assure you, this has never done my hake any harm. So you can push down on your palate like that, squeeze out the water. It's great if you do it on your palate because then that, that watery paint is still there for you to use again. Now, of course, you could also, you know, if you don't have any room on your palate, sometimes you just have to squeeze it out on your light box. Then that's wasted, but that's okay. We've got it out, we, we, the, the brush is, and then I can take off the excess again, like that, squeeze it out, and then lift it off. So you can see already my palette is back, getting back to where I want it to be. And that was the thing I wanted to tell you. This is not cruelty to a hake, to push its head down like this. I think the reason is, the reason is, you see, a tracing brush, it's got a very thin neck, hasn't it? And it's sable hair, and it's got a metal ferrule quite often. So if we were to push down, I don't even want to do it to my tracing brush, but if we were to push down like that with a tracing brush, you can see its neck is getting pushed against this metal collar, and the, the sable hairs will get cut and squashed and deformed. But with a hake, of course, it's got a wooden collar, and the hairs are probably goat or ox or something like that, forgive me, I don't know, but they're much stronger than sable. So it doesn't damage, they may be squirrel for all I know, it doesn't damage the hake. The hake can take this kind of treatment, it is fine. Clearly I don't go banging it down like that, and clearly I don't go making more of a mess than I have to. I just wanted to tell you that with the hake, it is tough enough, it is strong enough to take this kind of treatment every so often. So when you need to get off the excess moisture, that is a fine movement to do. So that is absolutely fine. It squeezes the water, the excess water out of your hake. You can see that happening. It squeezes the water out of your hake, which then leaves, first of all, your hake a little bit drier. Sometimes that's the problem. But also your palate a little bit drier. And that is also sometimes the problem. So already now, my palette is getting back to a lovely, lovely, peaceful, medium complexion. And if I do a zigzag now, there is a little bit of movement, just a little bit, enough to convince me that when I lay down the undercoat, I will have time with the water drying for me to blend it smooth. So I need a little bit of movement. What I don't want is all over the place. So I've squeezed out the excess water by that superficially cruel treatment of my hake, but I assure you my hake is fine. And now I will carry on and do the last undercoat. Again, 
a handmade, handmade piece of glass so it is rocking slightly. And you can hear the knocking. And then I blend that dry. So there we are. That is not cruelty to a hake. The hake is strong enough to take it. And then you can carry on doing your undercoat. I hope that's been useful. Lovely talking with you. Talk to you again soon. Bye for now.